Hello everyone, time for a long overdue update from the shed I think. So if I remember rightly, I mentioned that going forward I was going to be trying not to group all my videos together into individual projects because I came to realise that with the guitar build in particular it could be going on for years, I could get halfway through and then realise that it's broken and have to start again and everything like that. So trying to put out videos on a regular basis saying guitar one, part one and all that kind of thing isn't really going to work for me. Um, so I'm just going to bundle everything together that happens within the shed into just a regular update. And if you follow the channel regularly, then hopefully you'll be able to keep track of what's going on. So, first things first, you might notice that things look a little bit differently since the last video that I filmed. Um, we've acquired some tools and various bits and bobs, so let me just grab the camera and give you a quick, quick look at what's been going on. So, starting on the right here, you can see that we've actually put together a new workbench. Which is equipped with a small bandsaw from Aldi. Not obviously the greatest band in the world, but it does the job just fine. And we've also acquired a cheap pillar drill, which means I should be able to do some amplifier chassis work, drilling holes for all the knobs and switches and all that kind of thing. It should hopefully come in handy with the guitar build as well. And a chop saw as well, which isn't really used for guitar building all that much, but it certainly came in handy when I was doing the laminate flooring for the studio. And then if we move around, we can see that my Triton Ritter has been mounted to a piece of wood, which in turn has been mounted on top of a Black & Decker workmate, or, sorry, generic workbench. I'll put some photos of that up on the screen as well now, actually, that I uh, took with my camera phone as I was working on that project. It's a little bit rough and ready. I was very loosely following um, another video that I found online, which I'll put on screen now. I think uh, everything that I said in that video is perfectly valid. Uh, the only thing probably that was missed out was that the bolts needed to secure the router to the routing table are a UNC quarter inch type, I believe, and there's not a lot of room inside the the base of the router to take excess bolt, so you really do have to get the correct bolt length to match whatever thickness of wood you're using. Uh, moving around, we still have the wobbly workbench, just mainly being used for storage at the moment. And there's a few little bits and bobs that have been picked up in sales, for example, I don't know if you can see on the shelf there, there's a Dremel, and we've also acquired a few little drill bits and whatnot for use with the various tools. Probably the best thing about the shed actually at the moment is that it now has light. Electricity. Currently we're recording in uh, mid-November so we're starting to lose daylight pretty early so those lights are going to come in really handy. I believe there's also actually an electric heater stored around here somewhere. So that's what's been going on with the shed itself. Um, I've probably got best part of an hour, an hour and a half to work on something today, not a great amount of time. What I'd actually like to work on today is the Dallas Scala amplifier. I've actually got here with me the chassis, which has already actually been gutted, speaker removed. Again, when I was uh, had a very limited amount of time to work on it the other day. I did actually already, as I say, remove the speaker. Uh, this is the original speaker, which is just a 6x9 hi-fi speaker, really. I doubt it was really ever intended for guitar use. And the speaker that I intend to play, replace it with is this Celestian V-Type. Now, if Money was no object. I think the speaker I would have most liked to have tried in this amp was actually a cream back. Um, or maybe a high-end green back. But this speaker just happened to come up on eBay at the right price. Too, too good a bargain to miss, really. And I think it'll go quite nice in this amp. So the idea is to try and fit this speaker in the chassis. You can see that it does just fit nicely within the cabinet there. I don't think I should have too many problems screwing it in. 
there's plenty of room left over here where I could mount further electronics and things if I needed to. I was very tempted to try and transplant the whole amplifier, really the electronics and everything, to, to basically be mounted at this end. But I do have to remember that the original steel chassis bolts onto this top edge here. And I don't want to be doing really long wire runs from the input to other electronics over here if I can help it, especially before they've been amplified. But we'll see, as you can see, there is room for this speaker, just. Also, the most obvious thing that I'm gonna to have to do right away is actually route out a hole to mount the speaker. So let's get to that. Okay, so the more I look at it, the front panel is in in such a way that it needs to come out this way, which means a lot of these bits of wood are actually stopping it from coming out. I'm not going to have to dismantle the whole thing, but I am going to have to take out these bits of wood, so I'll do that now. There we go. As we can see, this grill cloth is quite past it. It's a shame. I would have liked to have kept it and preserved it as per the original, but I think we're already long past that and it's looking very tatty. It's worth noting that it's not wrapped around the edges. It's glued on. So we'll have to bear that in mind if we're going to re-trim this. If I was to try and wrap grill cloth around the edges and then put it back in, it would probably be a really tight fit. Um, so that's something to make note of. Anyway, let's see, let's see if this comes off. So the first task is going to be to make a template to cut our hole out of the front baffle of the existing enclosure. I have here a scrap piece of cardboard which is already kind of letting me down because it is by no means flat so it's not ideal but it should do nonetheless. First thing I'm going to do is just take the speaker and place it on the cardboard and draw around it. Just to get an idea where the perimeter of the speaker is, we don't obviously want to cut the full speaker size out because then it'll have nothing to bolt into, but this is just a reference point to get us started. Next thing, unfortunately I've left my good rule at home, but we shall try and persevere. Here's a nice piece of metal bar. I'm just going to use this to try and mark the centre of this circle. There we go. Next. the speaker and figure out how big we actually want the hole to be. Ideally the hole should be in line with the edge of these gaskets somewhere around there. There's a little bit of margin for error, doesn't have to be entirely accurate but you definitely don't want the hole being any narrower than sort of the first ripples in the speaker if you like. As I said, I left my measure at home today. 
check out the size of this pair of compasses. That seems to be the width we want our hole. Also check out this nifty old folding ruler. Okay, so if we use that, we can see that the size of the hole we want is exactly 11 inches, which is a nice round number if you use imperial measurements anyway. Eleven inches it is. So, schoolboy math time. What's half of eleven? Five and a half. doesn't have to be deadly accurate but that's looking pretty good bang on 11 inches the trick is now going to be to get this cut out relatively neatly unfortunately I think the only thing I've got available to do that with is a craft knife a little protection for the bench There we go. And as you can see, the off cut there just about fits inside the speaker where we would want the whole thing. Realistically, we could use either of these as a template, either that or that. Might use that actually. Even if you want the front mount, that's how it would look. Great. Now you might be asking yourself at this point, why am I actually bothering with the template? I have a pair of compasses here. I could have easily just measured them out and actually drawn directly onto the material that I wanted to cut. And the only reason really was I just thought it would be easier with a template to visualize where I actually wanted the hole especially in relation to the existing hole and also if by chance the center was going to be somewhere like here then it just ruled out any complications So realistically, we want the speaker as centred as possible while completely taking out the existing hole. So I think it's going to be about there. black paint they're making life a little bit difficult but I can see that and once again yeah 
Yeah, that's looking good. But I just want to be extra sure that it's going to fit nicely. I don't know if you can see that. If the speaker was in place, this bottom hole held up here would actually be behind. It would be behind this front lip not ideal but since we're using the diagonal screw holes it should be absolutely fine so we've got a piece of wood here now and all we really need to do with it is cut out that hole there's a few ways we could do go about it I think the easiest way actually would probably be to use the jigsaw I kind of wanted to use the router table just to get a bit of practice in with it but I think for the sake of speed the jigsaw if I can lay my hands on it it's probably going to be the quickest way to go so let's do that I should point out that I'm just actually going to want to cut roughly within side the hole and then we can sand it out to make a nice smooth opening Actually, you know what? I'm changing my mind. I think although the jigsaw would make it easier to, to cut out that hole, it's going to be quite difficult to get the work held in position so that I can freely use the jigsaw without uh, sort of leaning precariously on things. So maybe we shall give the router table a little go. Let's do it. Got some sandpaper there, I'm wrapping it around a large can. I'm just going to use it to smooth this out a little bit. That's uh, fitting in there rather nicely. Next we'll just uh, countersink these holes. Perfectly acceptable. So, next thing, grill cloth. So, conventional way would be to wrap that on the edges like so and staple it in place. 
which to be honest is how I'd like to do it. But I'm a bit worried that if I do that, it probably won't fit back in the case. Not as it is anyway. I could, in theory, shave off the sides a little bit, but I don't want to do that. So, I think I might try just cutting it to fit the front as the other cloth was when it was on there and I can try stapling it within the boundaries of the bit that's covered by the edge Well, don't know about you, but that looks a lot better to me. Yes, I think the grill cloth is a little bit loose on the front. I expected that, but I think it's perfectly acceptable. I think the best thing to do I'm not going to put it all back together as was just yet because I'm hoping to retool it to this as well. But I think I'll just shove a couple of screws in to keep the front stable even though it's wedged in quite well there. And we might uh, sneak it off home to have a little premature test of how this speaker sounds. So there we have it. That concludes another day in the shed. I would have liked to have got more done today but we only really realistically had a couple of hours. Uh, the end result looking pretty good. That grill cloth's definitely tidying things up nicely. If I'm honest, I think yes, the cloth is a little bit on the loose side, but if you're not going to wrap around at least and pull it taut before you step it, that's always going to happen. The ideal thing there would have been to spread some PVA glue over the front baffle and put that face down on top of the cloth with some heavy weight on it while it's pulled nice and tight just to allow it to glue itself in place before stapling it. Um, but I was happy, I knew what the outcome was going to be of that and it doesn't look too shabby at all. So, until next time, bye.